my name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. And today we're gonna to be talking about the new Chanel Rouge Coco Bloom Lipsticks. This is a new permanent lipstick line from Chanel with a high shine finish. These are currently available at boutiques. And if you're interested in purchasing from my SA, Jalissa, I have her information down below in the description box. They are not currently available on Chanel.com, but that should be changing very soon. I think sometime this week they will be popping up. Regardless, you can access the Rouge Coco Blooms on the Chanel website already if you are interested in taking a look at the shades. And if you scroll down to the bottom for each page with the particular shade, you can see you know lipstick models. So they, they do have three models wearing each shade. Now, I personally don't find that those little lip models really help too much. You know, those are usually computerized images and they're not completely accurate. So actually, Jalissa was kind enough to FaceTime with me and she tried all of, well, not all of the lipsticks, but she tried probably about half of the Rouge Coco Blooms on for me and swatched them and compared them so I could kind of narrow down which ones I wanted to pick up. So I did do a few quick arm swatches in my previous haul video where I featured these, but today we're gonna to do arm swatches and lip swatches, and we're gonna talk about the formula. I have been testing these for a few days now, and I have finally decided you know, what I think about this. So we're gonna go through all of the details. By the way, I have done a few wear tests with these as well, so I'll give you the details from that. Let's start off with some swatches. So each of these lipsticks come in a box like this, it says Rouge Coco Bloom. These are 0.11 ounces or three grams and they are made in France. And then inside you have packaging that's very much like the Rouge Coco Flash with the clear top. So you can see the shade inside and it is a click closure. And down at the bottom you have the description. Now this first shade I picked up is called 110 Chance. And you can see just with one swipe, how pigmented these are. They're a very soft formula as well. So they go on very easily and you really need like no pressure. You can see where I built it up a little bit here that it doesn't make a ton of difference. And particularly with the deeper shades in this line, it really doesn't make a difference. These two lighter ones that I have, you can see a touch of you know, depth or a little bit darker with additional swatching. Next up, we have 116 Dream. One eighteen Radiant. One twenty two Zenith. One thirty two Vivacity. Let's take a look at these five colors. So number 110 Chance has a bit of brown in it. It's kind of like a brownish peachy shade here. This is going to be one of the lighter shades. And then we have 116 Dream. This is the shade that as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. And this is more of one of those nude pinks, but there's peach in it. So there is definitely some warm tones to it. It's the one that I currently have on my lips right now. So this is 116 Dream. And then 118 Radiant. This is more of a rosewood shade. And I think it's really a, a pretty true rosewood here. So what rosewood means to me is that there is a little bit of brown, a little bit of like a pinky purple shade to it, and a little bit of red kind of all mixed together. And I can see shades of all of that in here. Next up, we have 122 Zenith, and this is a bright peachy coral shade. So it's definitely kind of got like that peachy vibe to it, but it is a soft coral. And then we have 132 Vivacity, which is going to be a much brighter, deeper coral shade with more like an orangey red shade to it instead. So there's more orange versus peach in here, and you can see how deep it is. Now, one thing I'd like to know about the these two shades here, they really make your teeth look very white. As I'm sharing with you the lip swatches that I made for these lipsticks, I'm going to share with you my thoughts 
on this formula and the shades in particular. In the Chanel Rouge Coco Bloom line, there are currently 20 shades. These are all permanent shades and they retail for 40 US dollars. Now, texturally, they feel very similar to the Rouge Coco Flash on the lips. If you're familiar with that formula, you know that it has kind of a thin, a little bit of an oily texture to it. And this Rouge Coco Bloom formula feels similar to that, but there's a little bit more slip, a little bit more of a, like maybe more of a silicone type feeling to it. And it feels a little bit thicker because of this high shine finish. So it's still gonna be one of those thinner formulas. It's just slightly thicker than the Rouge Coco Flash. If you do not like the Rouge Coco Flash formula, I don't think you will like this one. So this formula compared to the Rouge Coco Flash is way more pigmented. Rouge Coco Flash is really more for a sheer wash of color. It's almost a lip balm, but it's way more pigmented than a traditional tinted lip balm. Whereas this one here is going to be super pigmented with one swipe. And you can see with these lip swatches that you really don't need a second layer. Now, some pros about this are that this truly is a long wearing color. So with these lipsticks, you put it on, you can put it on the morning, you can eat, you can drink, whatever. By the end of the day, you still have pigment there on your lips. Now, some cons to this formula are that this high shine finish doesn't last very long. I give it about two hours before the high shine finish is worn down, and then you're left more with a matte pigment. Now, I do have to say that this matte pigment is a very strong wearing pigment. If you are someone like me who likes to have kind of that glossy feel on your lips, you're going to definitely want to either reapply or add a lip gloss when it starts to wear off. Again, this is super pigmented, so if you add a clear lip gloss or lip balm, you are still going to be able to maintain the look of your initial application. Now, initially when you see these formulas, they feel very smooth, they're very soft, they are kind of this silky texture on your lips, and it feels like something that would bleed and feather. I have worn these with and without lip liners, with and without lip balm underneath and so forth. And I have not experienced any bleeding or feathering. With some of the deeper shades, if you wanna get a really crisp line, I would still definitely recommend using a lip pencil or a lip liner, or even just a lip brush to make sure you get that really sharp edge initially. But I have to say, I'm very impressed that I have not experienced any feathering or bleeding throughout the day. And I think the main reason for that is when you put the lipstick on, you've got this glossy shine finish on here, but it will kind of settle and sink into your lips a bit. And that's the pigment that's really kind of setting. And then that pigment really stays put. So this glossy finish on it really is almost more like a clear glossy layer. It's not, but you know, as it wears away, the initial pigment that came in contact with your lips has kind of already set in the position that you want it to stay and the rest of it can kind of wear away evenly. Now, as for fading with the lipstick, as I mentioned, if you put this lipstick on and let's say you wait an hour or two before eating or drinking, at that point, once the glossy layer wears off and so forth, that pigmented layer that you have has worn off or well, has stayed even. It still looks good, it looks even. There's no like wear and tear evident. You just see pure color. And again, it will look more matte. But if you apply the lipstick and then you eat or drink pretty much right after you apply this, then the pigment hasn't really had time to set. And in that case, it does wear off evenly. So one of my wear tests, I you know, drank from my water bottle in probably about 10 minutes or so after applying the lipstick. And as it wore off, I had the center of my lips where it came in contact with the spigot on my water bottle. That part had kind of worn away and the rest of it remained very pigmented. So that's just something to know that there's sort of like a setting time with this. Now for the general appearance on the lips, it does remind me of the 
Ultra 10 U Duo on the lips when you top it with the shine. And this is very long, wa long wearing. And this is very long wearing, just like those products. However, they are not mask proof. There is definitely transfer um, when you are using this. And again, this high shine finish that's on here is a pigmented finish as well. So you will definitely have color transfer as well. It's just that if you allow it to remain on your lips for a little bit longer after you apply it before doing anything, then that base layer kind of sets and you're able to keep a really nice look to your lips throughout the day. So I hope that makes sense. A claim from Chanel with these lipsticks is that there are hydrating benefits to the lips. And I have worn these exclusively for four days now, and I have not noticed anything about hydration. My lips are in okay condition, but they're a little chapped. And honestly, this did not help at all. I don't think it made anything worse, but it definitely did not improve the condition of my lips either. Now, my personal opinion on these lipsticks, I like the lipsticks. I love the high shine finish. I think they are great for summer. I'm really enjoying the shades that I picked up, all five of them. And I have to say for me personally, my favorite is probably 116 Dream, but I have really been using 118 Radiant quite a bit as well. And one of the things that is really nice about these lipsticks are that they they have various undertones in them and if you put a lipstick on and it doesn't look great on you with you know that particular day change your clothes and it makes a huge difference so you know that's true of most lipsticks but not always and i have to say that sometimes i get some of these peachier shades for example 122 zenith and because of the under, undertones in the actual lipstick no matter what I wear, it just always looks too peachy and warm on me, but they must have mixed these undertones a little bit so that shades like that can work well on my coloring, provided that I am also kind of wearing colors that will complement it um, for clothing and the rest of my makeup, if that makes sense. Personally, I like these lipsticks. I find that they are nice, they're bright. They really remind me of summer, which is where I typically use. <clears throat> personally, I personally I really like these lipsticks. I find that they are nice, they're light, they're bright. They have a comfortable texture on the lips, and I'm very happy that they don't have any bleeding or feathering on me. And this high shine finish really makes me think of summer. That's typically the time of year that I prefer like glosses and high shine finishes. And I am really pleased with these. I really like how pigmented they are. I think they're very comfortable. Do I absolutely love them and think they are the best lipstick ever? That I would have to say no to. I still prefer wearing a traditional lipstick like the Rouge Cocos, Rouge Coco Allures. It's just texturally, that's my preference. I like to wear those, be able to top them with a gloss if I choose to and so forth. Now, I do think that these are really comfortable. They're definitely something I would continue to wear and I would pick up additional shades in this. So I think it's a really, really nice formula. I personally love the Rouge Coco Flashes and I wear them a ton during the summer. So I can definitely see this being another option that I'll reach for a lot. And again, for me, I think this lipstick formula is one that I'll gravitate towards during the warmer months, but during the cooler months, I'll probably gravitate more towards a traditional lipstick formula. Let's do a few comparison swatches. So first off, I wanna compare 118 Radiant with one of the Chanel Ultra 10U Duos. This is number 112, Chic Rosewood. And if you're not familiar with this formula, you get, I'm gonna put this right here, you get kind of this lip color here on one side and you want to put that on and let it sit for a couple of minutes. Your lips will feel kind of like sticky, like a little uncomfortable. And then you top it with this gloss and then this becomes truly, you know, mask proof. All right. So here's Chic Rosewood number 112 in Ultra 10 U Duo. And this is 118 Radiant. So you can see that Radiant is going to be a little bit warmer than Chic Rosewood. 
Another one of the duos I want to compare is number 174, Endless Pink. I'm actually not sure if this one's available right now or not because it is a limited edition shade. We're just going to put this right here at the top. Just get a better swatch there. So number 174, Endless Pink, is going to be fairly similar to Dream. Again, Endless Pink is actually going to be a little bit cooler. It's a little bit pinkier than Dream. Dream has a little bit more peach in it. Another shade I wanted to compare is one of the Suku Lip Glows, and this is shade number three. This is a permanent shade here, and we're going to put this one right here on the side. It's kind of got this like peachy pink vibe to it. And it's actually going to be most similar to 122 Zenith. They're actually, they're pretty close. 03 from Suku is going to be a little bit deeper and a little bit rosier than Zenith, which has, a, again, a little bit more peach in it. This is from Dior. This is one of the Dior Attic Stellar Shines. And I'm going to put this one right here. This is Ibis Pink. And this is going to be a much more sheer formula. This is number 452. And it is a pretty good match for Zenith. Zenith is going to be deeper and a bit more pigmented. This is going to be a nice sheer option. It has a shine finish, but not as shiny as these do upon initial application. Next, we have the Chantecaille Hummingbird. This is the Lip Chic in Passion Flower that came out last year. And this one is a pretty good match, or rather a pretty good in-between shade between 122 Zenith and 132 Vivacity. So it's, I'd say it's a good in-between shade there. Next, we have number 817. This is in the Chanel Rouge Allure formula. This is Rouge Splendide. This came out during the holidays a couple of years ago. This is really a bright pink. It's way pinker than Zenith here, but yeah, I thought they might be a little bit closer than they are, but it's definitely gonna be more pink. And then I have a bunch of Rouge Coco flashes to swatch for you. This one here is 116 Easy. And you can see how light this is. This one's definitely gonna be more of like a brown shade. There is a little bit of pink in here, but you can see compared to 116 in this formula, they're very different. This is 134 Lust, and I don't think this is going to be similar to any of them, but I just wanted to show you the difference. You can see how much more brown Lust is compared to any of these other shades that have a little bit of brown in them. This is 132 Flushed, and this has a little bit of shimmer in it. You can see how light and sheer this is, but the undertones in here are pretty similar to 122 Zenith. So Zenith is really going to be a much deeper, more pigmented version of this. Plus this one has some shimmer, but they do have the same tones to it. And last up, we have 144 Move. And here's Move. Let me move this one up here also. Okay, so I put Move right here and you can see that it's pretty good for matching with Dream. It's slightly, very, very slightly warmer than Dream. It's kind of a mix of Dream and Chance there, but it's really close. So this is 144 Move. And again, this is going to be one of the Rouge Coco Flashes that is more sheer. However, this is one of the more pigmented Rouge Coco Flashes. So if you want something a little bit lighter and a little bit more sheer, this would be a good option. And last up, we have number... 496 in the Rouge Coco formula, Tendress. Okay, and this is gonna be pinker than any of these new five. All right, so one more time, the five that we have here, we have 110 Chance, 116 Dream, 118 Radiant, 122 Zenith, and 132 Vivacity. I hope this was helpful and I would love to know what you think about this new formula. Have you picked any up? Are you planning on trying these? And next month in April, Guerlain is releasing their Kiss Kiss Bloom uh, lipsticks, which are also a high shine finish. So I will be picking up a couple of those to compare with these as well. But I think they are a really nice formula. So thank you so much for tuning in. 
And I hope to see you again very soon. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy.